for today's cup of coffee, I have a very disturbing uh, story for you. No, everything's disturbing these days. It just really, I don't know if you are like I am and scroll through headlines or whatever, but it's like everything is highly disturbing. And this is just one more, so I'm going to add to on this one. This was from Daily Mail and was by Rob Ralt. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly on that. From April the 28th, 2024. So I've sat on this story for a little bit because it was so disturbing. And link will be in the description box for those of you who are on BitChute and Rumble. Because YouTube, actually, I found out yesterday, if it's links within YouTube, I can post that. That's acceptable. But if it's outside links, no. So, for I like to cite my sources. I think anybody that's responsible cites their sources. So, anyhow, so if you are on the U of Tube and you want to read the full article, go to BitChute or Rumble. It says that a California based company that is called Profluent Bio has developed a system capable of creating a range of bespoke cures for disease by developing molecules that have never existed in nature. And I actually had at one point the other day looked up what bespoke means. So give me just a second now. Look it up again because I forgot that that was something. It's sort of like epigenetic. It's sort of an individualized type of cure. And um, yeah, it's sort of tailor-made is what that ends up being. And it says that Daily Mail spoke to Ali Mandani, CEO of Profluent Bio, who said the AI-made gene editors have been tested in human cells, which demonstrated high levels of functionality while not editing unintended sites in the DNA. Okay, my question is, how many times have they tested it on how many people and for how long? Because long-range studies on any kind of new whatever, especially medical, are essential. Or you can get into a real shit show on this stuff. It says the AI was trained on a database of 5.1 million CRISPR-associated proteins, allowing it to create potential molecules that could be used in gene editing. The system then narrowed down the results to 4 million sequences, allowing it to identify the gene editor, the team named Open CRISPR one Experiments showed Open CRISPR one performed as well as the Cas proteins, which were the uh, CRISPR-associated ones, but it also reduced the impact of off-target sites by 95%. So they're saying that this is more effective uh, than the original CRISPR technology. And it says that attempting to edit human DNA with an AI-designed biological system was a scientific moonshot, according to Madani. And who further stated the molecules do not exist in nature like previous technologies in gene editing such as CRISPR. Mm-hmm. Are we opening Pandora's box or has it already been opened and we're just now realizing to what extent? It says CRISPR is a Nobel Prize winning technique that can be used to edit the genomes of living organisms, cutting the cell's genes or adding new ones, but it is previously relied or has previously relied on gene editors found in bacteria. The technique has altered genes that cause hereditary conditions such as sickle cell anemia and blindness. Hillary Eaton, chief business officer at Profluent, said, quote, it's phenomenal that the first CRISPR-based treatments for genetic diseases such as sickle cell diseases are already changing the lives of patients, but there are remains, of, er, remains an urgent need to accelerate the development of this technology for thousands of other currently incurable diseases. So within this, they're saying that, that, that sense of urgency. Uh, okay. Is urgency always, if, if somebody has a long-standing illness, 
to wait five or ten more years to know whether a treatment is going to cause harm or not. Yeah, is it worth risk? And now this is very much ethics. And and we've had a lot of things that where ethics have been compromised. Well, I was going to say recently, but no, there's been a long history with the science compromising ethics. I mean, we can go back as far as like Tuskegee and uh, some of the lots of different things that if I mention them, the U of two would probably strike the video. That's insane. That is truly, truly insane. It says to achieve the breakthrough that Madini's team trained large language models on huge amounts of genetic data in the same way that chat GPT is trained on ta text and images from the internet. Well, didn't chat GPT get in a, a world of shit there for a while? Or was that another one? So some of this stuff, does it show promise? Yes. Is it there yet? I don't think so. And it's like, again, long range studies. And Medini said that AI was at the heart of this achievement and that they trained the long, large language models, the LLMs, on massive scale evolutionary sequences and biological context. From where? How were these samples obtained? And she says, Our vision is to move biology from being constrained by what can be achieved in nature to being able to use AI to design new medicines precisely according to our needs. Okay, to move beyond bi biology, what about creating new things that do not occur in nature, not just genes? So there's a lot, there's a lot in this story. There's a lot of questions that I have about this story and these companies and the regulations or the lack thereof. People need to be asking some serious questions. Just because you can do a thing does not mean you should do a thing. And says the company believes that AI can work as an interpreter to decode the language of life. So in other words, where they're wanting to play God. They're creating God in their image. It says clinical trials have already tested CRISPR technology to treat human genetic diseases. And Madani hopes that the new AI design molecules will boost the capability of gene editing technology even further. And I'll stop there on the story. And like I said, I'll give you the link and that you can uh, read the rest of it yourself. It's not that much that I left out. But within this, I think this is kind of horrifying that you're letting a computer, a human computer based something redesign humans. And be very much aware of the marketing strategy when discuss, when they discuss these things. It's always like, oh, well, this could cure sickle cell or it could cure cancer or it could cure a lot of different things. And for a lot of people, that very much could be a miracle. But there's also always a dark side to these technologies, to any technology. Because where there are those that would use these things for the purposes of good, there's always those that have nefarious reasons to, to do these things. And some of this stuff has gotten off the chain. And a lot of stuff is being revealed. And Robert Phoenix always has really good information. If you don't subscribe to him yet on uh, YouTube, he does different programs there. I know that he's posting some of the, his shows also over on BitChute. And um, he's also there on X. And so I urge you to follow him and because and it's like little snippets of wisdom every now and then. And he was talking about the upcoming Uranus in Gemini. I think that's correct, Robert, if I have botched that. Sorry about that. And it pulling back the veil further 
And my response when he had a picture of the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. And then below that, it was the, the little man that, you know, had deceived everybody to believe he was the wizard. And I'm like, oh, lovely. What fresh hell is this that we're coming into? And he explained, it's like, not really. It's just a matter of pulling back the cover or the curtain further. Which there has been so much stuff revealed over the past couple of years that it's been crazy. And you've got a lot of people that are waking up and going, oh, shit, we've been lied to. Yeah. And it's a matter of figuring out who are the ones that are deceived that really didn't have nefarious reasons. Who are the ones that are the deceivers? Now, ultimately, we know that this is a spiritual battle for real. Whether there's people that still don't want to acknowledge that there are unseen forces that do, you know, impact people's lives. And then there are those that truly refuse to see what's going on. I don't know. A lot of that has to do with narcissism, that they don't want to admit that they were wrong. A lot of it has to do with almost a uh, kid brain of, of these, like sticking your, finger in your in, fingers in your ears, la la la, I can't hear you. That ostrich syndrome, well, somebody will fix it. I'm going to stick my head in the sand. It's not how this is working. This is, we're coming into a time that it is personal accountability and responsibility. To not make a choice is still making a choice. But as far as when they are messing around, like I said, with DNA and all this bunch of stuff, you got to wonder, do I believe thoroughly that they're doing this to help people? No. Do I believe that the computer technology is there to the point to where it can make decisions like this? No, I don't. I think there's too many variables, too many unknowns with some of this stuff. And I had read another article uh, before doing this video where there was some woman who has written a book about uh, the possible sentience of AI already and have humans already been abusing it. Now think of this statement. I mean, truly, that they're questioning what is consciousness, which that doesn't surprise me. The thing that was not mentioned in the article of what she had written was a soul. As that's one of the things that defines us as human is we have a soul. So if you get into that, uh, you know, shit show of what is conscious and what is not, what is life, what is not life, and this has been going on for a while, when does life begin? What is life? At what point? And there's laws that absolutely uh, just contradict each other left and right. We are in uncharted waters. People are going to have to make their own decisions, but they need to really, instead of just a knee-jerk reaction, they need to sit and truly ponder these things. A lot of people are not going to do that. A lot of people don't even know why they believe what they believe, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, we're, we're in an interesting time. That's all you can say. So let me know in the comments what you think of this new, even more, you know, fresh level of hell. And, uh, yeah, your thoughts, because I always enjoy reading other people's thoughts. It helps me learn and grow. If you've had experiences with paranormal or supernatural encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, any of that good stuff, you can send me an email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com. And uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm on uh, most of the time on YouTube. <laughs> if I'm not on YouTube, look for me on BitChute or Rumble or there on X. It's Warlanda, C O C W S which stands for Cup of Coffee with Scream. They had a character limit on that. And, uh, yeah, just, just come on over there and let's discuss things. Know that you are loved. Humans are a very sacred creature. And I think that we've had forces of darkness deceive us about what we are. 
for a very long time. So let's rediscover what it is to be human. Treat other people the way that you would like to be treated. And Lord willing, we'll see you on the next cut. Bye.